let's think about technological progress. Well, how do we measure? We've measured productivity. How do we measure technical progress? Anybody know? TFP. What is that? Total factor productivity, right? So you can think of labor pro growth in labor productivity, great growth of Y over L is delta Y minus delta L, right? Where I use this delta symbol to mean percentage change or D log or change in logs. So the change in the ratio of Y over L is just the growth in output minus the growth in labor. So if output went up 6% and labor went up 4%, we'd say labor productivity went up 2%, right? That's how we measure it. We got 6% more output with only 4% more labor. We must have got the 2% from somewhere else. Right? That's, the, that's the growth in labor productivity. Now, total factor productivity works the same way. Delta TFP is going to be measured as delta Y. But instead of subtracting off just the growth in labor, I'm going to go subtract the growth in total input. And the growth in total input is going to be measured as share of labor delta L plus the share of capital delta K. Now, how can we motivate that? Well, if we go back to our motivation we had, remember we had that, that CRS model. In fact, this equation doesn't even depend on CRS. But when we had that CRS model, we said, look, this is the predicted increase in output based on the change in labor and the change in capital, right? All we need to use is labor and capital being paid their marginal products will give you this relationship. Well, this is the share of value of output paid to labor. This is the share of value of output paid to capital. Now, if you didn't have constant returns to scale, those two numbers wouldn't add up to one. That's the only difference. With constant returns to scale, they'll add up to one, but this formula would work even without constant returns to scale. All right, so that's going to measure. But it's kind of the same idea, right? Because it's output growth minus input growth. Did output grow faster than input? If output grew faster than input, then we must have some technological progress. People often call this a residual measure of progress because it calculates the difference between actual and predicted, just like a regression residual would be the add difference. Yeah? Sure. Technical regress, <laughs> right? Yeah, you could have technical regress, no question. Okay, certainly with the measured inputs. Okay, like for example, you might have technical regress on a particular location if it's becoming like you know oil field might be becoming depleted, so you're going to have some technical regress. Now that's not really technical regress; it's really there's a factor that's shrinking that you're not counting, which is the size of the oil reserve. But in general, this is going to measure some unmeasured factors. And almost always, you know, those unmeasured factors are getting better or worse. All right? Now, we can also measure total factor productivity on the price side. Just like we had two measures for labor productivity, we had real output per hour and we had the real wage, we can measure it here as SL delta W plus SK delta R minus delta P, again, this is a residual, right? And this one does require constant returns to scale. This is the predicted increase in the cost of output based on the cost of inputs. And this is how much output prices actually went up. So if output prices are going up slower than input prices, then we kind of got to be getting more productive. How are we getting more money to pay the inputs? If the outputs are not going up in price as fast as the inputs, we must be getting more productive. In fact, with constant returns to scale, it's easy to show that these two numbers are equal to each other. That is, they're equal. These two have to be the same just because of the accounting. The left, if you move delta Y and delta P over to one side and all the other ones over the other side, it's just growth in the value of outputs minus the growth in the value of inputs. That's and if you have constant returns to scale, outputs and inputs have to be growing at the same rate in terms of value. Okay? 
facts are exhausting would tell you that. All right? Yep. Yep. Oh, that's it's a residual. It's a residual. It's gonna. It in reality is gonna get two, three, and four. All two, three. And, that's an important point. This measure is gonna get two, three, and four in there. Right? No question. They're all in there. In fact, if there were other inputs that I wasn't measured, they're in there too. Right? Anything that's not. That's. It is a residual. Anything I'm not counting is in there, okay? Right? So that agree. Two, three, and four are in there. I just want to think about a world that only has one and two. So I want to assume, for the moment, three and four aren't happening. The world is being driven only by one and two. 